Welcome, I'm Pam Larikia from livingjoyfully.ca and today I'm here with Anna Brown. Hi Anna. <laughs> so this month in the Living Joyfully Network, the theme is not back to school. And as the network's community advocate, which you super rock at Anna, thank you so, so much. <laughs> I'm really excited to dive into this topic with you because The back to school messages are really ramping up around us right now for the last few weeks, certainly in the Northern Hemisphere where we're all in that back to school season. And it's understandable um, to feel a bit off kilter. You know, it's a time that we kind of find ourselves questioning our choice not to send our kids to school because darn, everybody seems so excited, you know, even, even now with the, you know, whether they're choosing distance learning or whether they're choosing the, you know, their areas going back into the classroom, et cetera, people are still, you know, excited to figure something out. I think it brings them kind of energy about that for sure. Yeah. 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 Um, So if you're feeling that just want to say it's okay, you know, don't worry about it. Don't beat yourself up about it. What it really is for us is a great reminder that unschooling is a choice. Like so often on the podcast, we go back, it's a choice, you know, and what this choice does, this moment does for us is really invite us to remember why we chose this path in the first place. It's an opportunity for us to reconnect with the reasons that we're choosing unschooling in the first place, because sometimes we can forget, can't we? I think it's such a great time to revisit the whys. And I kind of like that it comes up every year because, you know, I think maybe we should even be revisiting the whys more than that. But but I love that it's this kind of reminder of, hey, I want to check in about my whys, because the thing is, something drew us to unschooling. And oftentimes what we've seen with families is that things weren't going well. Something was happening with their child that was sending off alarm bells. They were feeling some concerns. They were looking for alternatives. How do I, you know, make this better? All of these different pieces. But, you know, then we choose unschooling and things are humming along. And, you know, we just kind of forget about like what was happening before that was so intense or difficult. And, and, you know, that I love that. That's great because that means you're living in the moment, you're enjoying where you are, you know, and, and so that's wonderful. But then this happens, then we have this time where these outside voices creep in and, you know, a time like back to school is definitely a time that that can happen. And so it's just really nice to remember, you know, your why and, and how things have changed since you've made those choices. So we had this really lovely thread in the network where people were sharing their whys and, you know, they spoke about relationships and agency and freedom and the time and the space to, you know, be and become and for their children to be children and to play and to, you know, explore and do. And I, I just, I really loved reading just the thoughtful reasons people were making this huge paradigm shift. And, you know, you and I have heard them over the years as we've been in this, you know, for so long, but it is just really beautiful to revisit those because these are intentional choices. Like you said, and just remind, we didn't get here, you know, by the seat of our pants, you know, we made a choice, you know, we, we really, we looked at alternatives because obviously most of us are funneled right into school with our children or with ourselves. And so again, something happened that spoke to us differently. Something about unschooling spoke to our heart, something about it resonated with us. And so just revisiting that periodically, I just think it can help us moving in the direction that feels best for everyone in the family while tuning in to individual needs, as opposed to these outside expectations. And so I love this time for that. Yeah, and I find it so valuable. Yeah, that that thread, when you revisit your why, I find it so energizing. So re-energizing, right? Re-inspiring to remember why we chose this path, this path in the first place. And it's also a good time to remember because, you know, with some distance, you're like, oh, it wasn't so bad, was it? You know? <laughs> Oh my goodness, you know, if we just, because, you know, the, it's not that unschooling doesn't take energy, like we're choosing, it's, it's getting back to remembering why we're choosing to put this effort, this energy into making these choices and connecting and engaging with our kids. It's a different lifestyle completely, right? So it is helpful sometimes to just remember what it was like 
um, before you made this choice, when you were often like struggling, trying to figure out what path you wanted to take. So it can be really helpful to remember, oh yeah, you know, these were the things, these were the reasons why I decided that this seemed to be a better path for us, right? So I think it's super helpful. And I would encourage, you know, anyone just to take, even if it's just five minutes as you're walking here or doing something, something, just to remember why you made this choice. Because I swear, it just, it just brings a little more sparkle to my day, to every engagement, you know, with anyone that I come across in my family and outside, because I'm like, I'm fully owning this choice again. And I'm excited to make it happen in our lives. So it's, it's really inspiring to just take that moment, isn't it? To just like, why, why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? And it's so helpful because, you know, when you have these other messages, instead of them um, bouncing around in your head, you can go, oh yeah, but this is why I'm doing this instead. This is why I'm doing this instead. So once we remember our why, the next step that, you know, thinking back on all the years when I've been through this, <laughs> I then found it really helpful to shift my gaze outward now, right? So we're remembering why we're doing this. And now I can look like part of that re-energizing piece is looking with fresh eyes at what's going on right now in our day-to-day lives. Because like, again, our lives look very different than the more conventional ones, don't they? Well, and I think, you know, bringing that focus back to your days and how they're playing out, you know, really tuning into your children. How do they shine? What's lighting them up? You know, that really recentered me. You know, that just it just instantly grounded me in my choices. It instantly just brought joy to my life to see them and to see them enjoying the life around them and to really see how much I was enjoying it. Because, you know, sometimes those outside voices, when we kind of go in and we're worrying about those things, take us out of the moment and they they take us out of our joy and our fun in the life. And so, you know, I think this is a really great time to, yeah, then, okay, I'm going to like dive in and see what's happening and and engage with my children and, and see where you know, how these choices that we made, where they're leading us. And, you know, that you're, that was just that reminder to me that I was actively and intentionally creating the life that I wanted for our family. We were doing that together. And, and that active intentional piece that just that reminding myself of that gave me strength in those convictions, you know, like, again, I'm not just willy nilly getting here. Like I, we really put a lot of thought into it and a lot of engaging with each other. Like what did do, do the kids want? What do they need? And, and, you know, they're telling me what they need and what they would like it to look like and all of those pieces. And I don't know when you really sink into that, those outside voices just honestly mean nothing because they, they, they're not seeing the rich, deep exchanges that you're having as a family. Yeah, no, exactly. I found those times when I started looking. So really, I'm I'm looking at our lives through the lens of our why, of, of my why. So that's why it's going to be very different for each person and what what it is that drew them. But looking at our days, I found super validating for my choice, right? It's like, oh, you know, so maybe maybe it was relationships. Maybe it was my child has a different, you know, style of learning. Um, you know, just there, there's a whole spectrum of, of multiple. And for most people, it's more than one. And, and it changes over time, right? <laughs> but anyway, so wherever you are, whatever the whys that are resonating for you the most right now, look at your days. And I am sure you're going to see that happening. It's like, oh, yeah. I chose relationships and we've got the time. Doesn't mean people are getting along. But we have the time to support each other, to talk to each other, to work things out. It's like, oh, yeah, see, that's really happening in our lives. So whatever or if, you know, your child's learning style didn't fit into a classroom and and your child left school. Now you can see them learning all the time. Literally, remember, look, they are learning through everything they're doing. Look what he's or she's doing over here and now she's picking this up and oh I remember six months ago how hard that was for them and now you know look at them breeze through that just reminding ourselves so I found it very just validating of my why to be reminded and see it in action 
in my days, right? And that that was just another step uh, helping me move through this uncomfortableness of all these, like you said, outside voices that are that are you know creeping into my days. So <laughs> I really love that piece. Um, another thing that I found helpful when I was feeling off kilter with this was the reminder, and you brought this one up, which I think is super. It's the reminder not to judge my insides by someone else's outsides. That's super helpful, isn't it? (laughs) Oh, yeah. Such an important reminder. And I think especially during this time, because with our time of social media, Facebook news feeds are filled with the smiling children going off to school. And I have some friends that they make these really cool boards that like, you know, it says grade four and how tall they are and how, you know, this and what they've done and what their favorite thing for the summer was. So cute, you know, such a cute photo op. (laughs) And the parents are saying how excited the kids are, but it's a photo op. (laughs) That's the bottom line. Because, you know, the thing is most of us went to school, most of us that are listening to this, and we know that it is not all rainbows and unicorns. We just all know it. And even for me, so I would have said, um, you know, had you asked me during my school years that I would say, yeah, I like school. You know, it's easy for me. It's, I I don't, it's not, no big stressors about it. I mean, there was some middle school stuff that was not fun, but, you know, basically there were things that I enjoyed, but (laughs) had you told me that I could be exploring all the things that I wanted to explore to the depths that I wanted to explore them, I would have picked that. <laughs> it never down. crossed my horizon, right? How <laughs> <are> you happy? <laughs> you know, I'm a scanner and I like to do all the things and I just didn't even know it was possible. Yeah. So, you know, when you're seeing those photo ops and that whatever else, you know, they're, they're going along this prescribed path and that's great. But you know that there's this broader picture and you're seeing your children dive into the things that they're wanting. And so those pictures are just, we're surface level. You know, that that we don't know what that child's dealing with even that day that the picture's being taken. We don't know what that family is dealing with. And, And I think oftentimes they have a lot wrapped up in making it work. You know, even to the point of creating a story that might not be the whole picture because it just it feels better. And I get that. I I really do. Because, you know, we're taught that being a part of that system is what we have to do. It may not be perfect, but it's just a have to do it. And we just make the best of it. And so I I understand those attitudes, but what I, but, you know, I feel like in in our circle, we know, but it's not true. You don't have to, (laughs) you can do all the things and, you know, we can trust where they are on their journey and fully embrace our different path as well. Both can exist. And so I think kind of wrapping your head around that, that, they're on their path and that's great. And we're on our path and that's great. We don't have to judge each other by each other's path. And so that's the thing. Don't look at the picture and then judge your life about it because you don't know their journey and why they're making the choices they are, but you do know your journey and you do know why you're making your choices. And that's what we're talking about, you know, a minute ago. Like that's why digging into that why is so important. You know, so bringing yourself right back into that moment, seeing the children in front of of you, remembering why you make that choice or that you can make that choice if you haven't. Maybe you're listening to this and you haven't made that choice. And we're here saying you can make that choice. (laughs) You know, if things aren't going well and you're wanting to explore some different options, there are options. And I think so many times we don't know that. I mean, I know you've spoken before that you didn't know, you know, homeschooling, you didn't even know it existed. Because if if you truly see your child and, you know, we want to create that environment where they can grow and thrive and it's possible. So, again, it's just it's it's not an either or both can exist and we can celebrate. I mean, I love those pictures. Oh, my gosh. I love seeing that picture every year. I've seen it since the child was (laughs) and I love seeing it. But it for one second doesn't make me want to do that path, you know, and so I can celebrate that and know that I made the choices and my children made the choices that were right for them. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. And the other piece too, I think there's a self-awareness level as well. So that, you know what, if you're finding those, like if on social media, you're seeing those pictures, that excitement and everything, and you're feeling it like a weight and you're having a hard time with those other voices drowning out your own and, you know, your, your own why and that kind of stuff. There is nothing wrong also with choosing just to take a little break. You don't need to announce it or just 
don't open it for, for a couple of weeks because this energy will die down, right? Um, this fury around it, you know, I, I enjoy the fall energy as well, you know, so, but it, it passes, you know, as people get more into the routine, like it's new, it's something new now, you know, new classroom, new teachers, new things, um, new routines. So, well, and they're trying to make it fun for their kids. They're yeah. trying to make it this big event so that their kids buy into it. <laughs> so that's part of the making the pretty sign and doing the thing and trying to make it fun. Yeah, yeah. So if that's, you know, just not feeling good for you in the moment, boom, you, you yeah. don't have to You just consciously make a choice again. Everything's a choice, right? You can choose not to go there like as a protective measure for yourself, not as, as a judgment against yourself. Oh, I can't handle it or anything like that. No, you know, we talk so much about, it's not about judging things. It's not about judging ourselves. It's about thinking about where we are in the moment and how we're feeling and how things around us are feeling and choosing to support ourselves, right. To help ourselves, not to make things more difficult for ourselves, you know, that's a, that's another huge piece, isn't it? We are taught that we need to do the hard things, you know, for us to be strong, we need to, you know, this, this hard thing and this hard thing. No, you got to do it. You got to do it. You got to stick with it. You know, that kind of stuff. It's your fault if you can't handle that. But those messages are not helpful at all. Like instead to, um, protect yourself, to support yourself. And these aren't, that's a lovely thing about choices. It's another choice in the next minute, the next day, the next week, I can choose something different later, but you know what? I think this choice might be the best for me right now. Let's make it and play with it and see what happens. You can always change your mind. <laughs> and again, like we were saying, you can go touch base in a couple of weeks and see what things feel like. Maybe wait a couple of weeks more again. You know, you it's what's important is how it feels and how it helps you in your journey and what you're trying to accomplish. And literally that will help your journey go more smoothly and more quickly, if you're really engaged with yourself, understanding yourself, and surrounding yourself with the things that are going to be helpful, not trying to force yourself to do things that that are are really messing with your head, really. Right. right. It's yeah. True. No. Um, that leads so nicely into the next. Yeah. One. <laughs> I love when that happens. Um, because it can also be so helpful to surround yourself with others that are making similar choices. So as we're talking about stepping back from things that are making um, those other voices louder in our head, we can also more positively step towards others that are bringing in better voices for us. Um, so maybe that's other unschooling families, maybe in person, if you've got groups around you, they may not be meeting right now, maybe virtually, maybe um, different online groups. That can really help us not feel so alone in the choices we're making. Because when we have so many of those voices in our heads and we feel like, oh, everybody's doing this. I'm like the only one who's making this <laughs> choice, you know, and, and when you're feeling alone, just that even makes it harder, doesn't it? It does. And, and honestly, it's really been such a beautiful part of having the network is just being able to kind of steep in this environment of families who are choosing, you know, this life. And it's just amazing seeing the connections, the joy, how their days flow, how they move through challenges. And that's the thing, because we know we all have challenges, but bringing them to people who kind of get the journey as a whole is so valuable. And so on the network, we're all very different. You know, we're different personalities. We're, we're from different parts of the world. You know, we're scattered about the whole world. And yet we have this commitment to, you know, creating an environment where our kids can follow their passions, learn to listen to their inner voice, have the space and time to figure out who they are. And so seeing that play out in different families is so beautiful and inspiring. And when you bring a challenge there, you get these really thoughtful, interesting replies like, okay, because they understand these first nuances. And then I can take what they're saying and kind of tweak it for the nuances of my family. 
but it's, it's, you know, it's very hard to approach someone that doesn't know anything about unschooling because they're still going, well, wait, why is that happening? <laughs> like what, why are they not in school? What? And so it's like, no, no, I'm trying to get to this thing. And I want you, you know, to help me with this part of the problem. And so that's what I love about a community. And again, if it's in person, that's wonderful. And if it's a local group, that's wonderful too, you know, but, but for the network that really has been amazing. And I do really love the different cultural aspects and the worldwide aspects because it, you really do see all of these, these themes that are the same, but playing out in a little bit different ways as they look at the nuances of their own individual family. And then that I think helps you go, okay, I get it. There's going to be nuances for my family about what works for each of us, but yet there's these themes and these principles and these overlying things that really kind of help us hone in on, on how that's going to work for us. And so, and just like Pam was saying, I mean, if your life is filled with people, you know, going back to school and all of that energy, just step back for a minute because, you know, let them get into their flow of their year while you focus on your flow. And then you can come back together with those friends. And it's it's not such a charged energy. And I think this year, especially, um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's very emotional for people. There's just a lot to consider with their kids going to places that some people don't feel are safe. And then, or then this, you know, popping five-year-olds in front of a computer to do things that they're not interested in, you know, that feels really hard. And so they're having so much to process right now. And, and if you're in a place where you can help them process that, then great. But if you're feeling like, eh, this is just kind of messing with me and our flow as we get, you know, into our area, then yeah, just take a step back for a minute because because it's going to pass. I remember, um, you know, we actually loved back to school <laughs> because it meant that we got our museums back, we got our parks back, <laughs> you know, and we had, we lived in a big city at the time and there were lots of home and unschoolers and we had, you know, unschooling packages at the, you know, bouncy place and the whatever. And so then we, we ruled the town again. So we loved it. So that, you know, there are perks both ways. You can kind of look at, at, at the, all those different pieces. <laughs> I love that. Yes. We always science center. We, we practically have the entire building I know. For ourselves yeah. in the first month before all the field trips started. Up. Yeah. So yes, over time, you, that, that is a beautiful part of the typical uh, back to school season. One piece that jumped out of me, I just wanted to say, I mean, it's not related, but you know, you, we're hearing stories now of, you know, the kids who are doing distance learning and all the rules around having to sit there and, you know, the bugaboo where we talk about how, you know, my, my kid just loves the computer or the tablet or whatever. And, you know, we keep saying, you know, it's not about the computer. It's about the thing because they're bored out of their mind. <laughs> they're in, so often is, is what people are complaining about, you know, in Zoom with their teacher yeah. or whatever, but they have to, and but trying to force them to, no, it's not the computer. <laughs> It's not the screen. It's, it's not the screen. That's what it yeah, is. It's something interesting to them, you know, when you're talking about an unschooled child. And this is the opposite of that. So, yeah, <laughs> definitely not the screen. It's the content and what brings joy and, and yeah. mirth and fun. Exactly. Uh, the other piece I wanted to, you know, pull out from what you said there um, is the, the friends thing and the groups, right? Because I think so many of us, um, will can relate to you know having having challenges and and we're used to taking our challenges like to our friends or right. to our extended family maybe to our parents to you know and uncle cousin whatever we're used to saying um to sharing our challenges in those moments and getting feedback but we're finding now that we've chosen this unschooling path and we're taking a different route that's so often because that's the piece that's the most different so often the recommendation recommendation is, well, put them in school. <laughs> then you'll get this time. Then they'll learn, you know, how to get along with you. You won't be arguing with them all day or, you know, whatever. But because that is the biggest piece that's different for most people, that seems the first place to go to solve it. Well, you know, get them in school. And then, then, then we can talk about an, anything deeper that happens. But that is really as far as uh, most people will get when you're having those kinds of conversations. Like, and if you refuse to do that, well, then this is all your own problem. <laughs> you deal with. 
Yeah, and and you can, as you were saying, you can completely understand that because that is their context, right? That is how they're seeing things. If we were in their shoes, that would very much be something that we would suggest. <clears throat> if we thought they were something, they were doing something that was really different and off the wall, which is how they see it. It's like, well, that's going to be causing so many problems for you. So to gather with like-minded um, people and to ask our questions there, like you said, now we're all starting on the same foundation, right? We can get past those super easy and not very helpful at all suggestions <laughs> or answers and actually get into the meat of things. And the other beautiful thing is when, when we're talking about getting to the meat of things, it's not, I mean, that's one big thing um, for the network. It's not sharing advice and telling other people what we think they should do, right? Because as you said, families are different. We're all individuals. But as we each share our experiences and how we maybe work through similar situations, then you can see the foundation. You can see the principles that under lay underlie <laughs> our choices <laughs> in as we were working through them and what our experiences what were and then you can bring that into your own bubbling right your own thinking about the situation and your own individuals people involved in it and just start coming up with ideas and possibilities that might work for your family in particular. So that's one thing that I find so helpful. Go ahead. It, it brought something to mind because like you were saying, I think with um, people that are, you know, choosing school and that kind of stuff, they have an attachment to that choice. And so that is kind of the first lens that they see when they're talking to you, because it's like, wait a minute, I have attachment to this choice. And so I'm going to do that. Whereas what I love about what happens on the network is there's really no attachment to anyone changing or doing things one particular way. It really is just about sharing like, yeah, we're on this journey to connect with our children and to have these relationships. And then here's the things that have kind of bubbled up and helped me. And so, you know, that speaks to me in particular, because I, I really have this kind of radar for people that are kind of stuck or attached to one right way and don't want to be questioned about it because I like to question things. And so I, I love that um, just kind of more, you know, organic sharing and not attachment to outcome, which we talk about in other ways with our children, but it's the same for this too. And so realizing that when you're getting advice, maybe from family or whatever, that they have some attachments to these choices that they've made and that that's about them. So I don't know, something about that just kind of sparked up for me. Which leads exactly to something else that came up, which I loved, is that if you find, that's why, you know, the self-awareness is just such a valuable piece, right? If you find that you still keep wanting to go back to those conversations um, with people um, that are are outside, have that different lens, have that more school, more conventional lens, um, it, it can be so useful to ask if we are continuing to try to engage with them around it because we feel a need to, get, to convince them <laughs> that our way is good. And we're, we're trying to get some validation for ourselves and our choices by convincing them that our choices are, are valuable. But that's, that, that's when you get in that twist, right? Because they have their choices and they too want, uh, you know, to convince you that no, no, my way is the right way, right? So it's, it's so valuable to get and helpful to get to that space where you can see that this is my journey, this is their journey. It's not about right or wrong, right? We're each making our best choices, the choices that we think work best for our individual families, for our individual situations, for the way we individually see the world, right? So it's such an interesting piece to remember in that engagement, they're coming with that lens and, and they are attached to that lens. And then if we find ourselves going back often, it's a great question, you know, why do I really feel the need to keep engaging and not accept that two different views or two different perspectives are okay, two different life paths, right? Yeah. 
It's, it's, and, and you're right. That is all about that self-awareness piece, because once you and, and I think the things we just talked about earlier in the podcast, like that's the thing when you sit in your why, when you're connecting with your children, you don't need that outside validation and you don't need to convince that person. You can honestly trust in their journey and you can know I am right where I want to be. We are making choices together. We are right where we want to be. And so it, that is that next step in the journey for people. And it, it really feels great when you can get there. Yeah, yeah, it really does. And again, that leads so nicely to that next piece, because now, you know, we're steeped in that self-awareness. Um, but I found, so for the next step, because I've been in my head now for a little while, haven't I? As I've been thinking about these whys, as I've been, you know, worrying about all these other voices and working through quietening them. Um, the next step for me that I found really helpful, because I haven't, it doesn't mean I've solved it at this point. I've thought through things, right? But now that's one thing. Inaction is where the river hits the road, truly, right? So when I found myself swirling in my head for a while, uh, it was a great reminder to take that next step and choose, actively choose, intentionally choose to connect with my kids, right? Yeah. Find and embrace that joy. It's just so valuable, right? Oh, I mean, absolutely. And I mean, we talk about it as, you know, getting out of our head and into the moment yeah. because, you know, there are times that our thoughts can kind of betray us or take a lot on a life of their own and, you know, really keep us stepping back mm -hmm. you know, because we are getting, Ooh, we're in our head. We're thinking we're stepping back and you're kind of feeling this pull. But the minute we bring ourselves back to that moment in front of us, sitting on the ground with our kids, building a Lego, watching a show, playing a game, we are instantly grounded in the now. And then, and then our whys are just surrounding us, you know, it, and it's so the, those thoughts do not hold that power anymore. And these deep connected relationships are just so satisfying and fun. I mean, there's just a lighter, fun, lean in energy, and it just quickly quiets that outside noise, you know, because Honestly, those outside people, again, often don't even know it's possible to have what we're talking about. They really haven't been given a template for that. They really haven't been, you know, don't have the experiences. So, you know, I just found so much confidence in our choices by really seeing my children and taking a good look at our life and just being in it, just being right in it with them and enjoying it and doing things I enjoy and bringing that to them and seeing the things they enjoy and that back and forth, you know, because, you know, life is going to bring us ups and downs. We've talked about this a lot. But I like to keep saying it because, again, I think people are like, well, your life must be perfect. <laughs> it is not. <laughs> um, but what I see over and over again as our relationships and our connections just help us navigate those times. And so it's not about avoiding those times. It's about having these relationships and connections that help us get through those times. And in between those tough times, there's so much joy and laughter. And honestly, what I've seen is even in the midst of the really hard times, because we have the connection, there's joy and laughter. So it's not even a, you know, dichotomy like that. So I, you know, it's hard to explain, I think, when you haven't experienced it, but but know that you can, you know, and that it's that it's there and that it's available and that there's all these people that, you know, are doing it and 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 sharing all these different ways that it can work. So, yeah, it's so important that get out of your head, get into the moment <laughs> and just bring all of that, you know, excitement of that moment. OK, like, I'm going to see if I can remember all that came up <laughs> Like that first piece that I want to bring back is they, so many other people, those other voices don't even have a template for what our lives look like, right? So of course, you know, that ties right back to why are we trying to convince, uh, get validation from somebody else? Because imagine what you would need to help them understand. You would need to show them that entire template so that they can actually see what's different, right? That, and that's, that's not, I mean, unless they're actually interested and curious, but you know, um, that is just such a, a huge piece of it. They can't know our lives. They don't know what's going on, you know, in our conversations, in our connections, in um, the respect that we show for each other, in the trust that grows there. Even when, you know, even if they see little snippets that look strange to them, we know the bigger picture, right? We know what's going on. 
Um, and we know how to learn more about it, right? So that we can figure out and move through those times. Um, so I, I just thought that was a really fun piece to bring. Um, now, where is it going? Ah, out of our heads, into the moment. Ah, because that, yes, exactly. You That is where we see it all in action. You can really, I literally feel like a weight coming off when I can just get into the moment, right? Because in our heads, we're trying to figure out so many things. When you, I, you know, I, I liken it to, to mindfulness, right? And to just really choosing to actively engage in that moment. Because in there, that's where you see that all that other stuff truly doesn't matter um, in that moment. And that the realization that that life moving forward is just a, is a collection of those moments, right? And that the more that we can engage and be there with them, Oh, and that was the other piece I wanted to say. Maybe it's not physically, you know, sometimes some kids are like, no, I want to, you know, they're in their room and they're listening to something or they're reading or they're playing games or, you know, whatever they're doing, they are wanting that private time, but I can still be in the moment with that. Does that make sense? Because I can be like, oh man, look what they're doing. That's awesome. I can bring them, you know, tea, drink, snacks, you know, I can be, if, if they're really into a game, I can be researching that game. I can be finding, you know, maybe there's a book about it. Maybe there's, you know, I remember when you used to find like the orchestras going around playing video game music concerts and, and stuff like, but just some fun things, even maybe just another link to something else. I was showing Joseph a couple of podcasts that I came across last night that I thought he might find interesting. You know, so all those people doesn't necessarily mean when we say connect with your kids, I don't want you to just say, oh, well, my kid likes to spend a lot of time on their own. I can't do that. No, it's just different. It's just a different way. Right. But our energy can connect with them. We can be fully supporting what they're doing, more actively engaged with them that way. So I, yeah, I want to make sure people, because if they're doing something they love, most likely they're smiling, laughing, engaging with that friend online or with that game that you're doing. And even if it's a frustrating game where they're like into it, you can see the puzzles working in the mind and you just see how much they're getting out of that experience. And so that can bring you down to the moment. Yes. And, and being totally open and engaged when they come out. Yeah. So yes. if maybe when when they're taking a break, they come out for the washroom and they come out to get a snack or something like I in those times, I would actively remind myself, OK, stop what I'm doing and just be around and open in case they want to share if they're interested um, in connecting for a little bit. Like that's what we have. We have the time and the space to choose these moments. Right. And to give them the value and the respect that that those moments deserve, right? We look for those moments of connection yeah. when and, the possibility is there. And to prioritize that. Yeah. And like you said, the space, because I think it would have to be really hard to just hope that between seven and nine, something's going to bubble up and we're going to have a conversation, you know, likelihood, no, we're all tired from the day at that point, but we have that time for things to bubble up and for conversations to happen and for all these different pieces. But I think you're right. You do have to be aware and be looking for them and say, you know what, I am going to set this down that I'm doing to have this connection. And, and I still find myself, you know, doing that now with my 20 year old, you know, when she wakes up and comes down, it's like, I'm busy doing stuff. And, you know, I've got a whole life and things, but it's like, mm, I'm going to pause for a minute, you know, so that I can have that little moment, you know? Yeah, no, exactly. Exactly. So it is completely worth, again, we were talking about how unique families are, right. And the things look different. The fundamental is the connection, right how that might play out in your family. That's your fun, creative work to, to play with, right? To try these things and to see, to see what works. And again, it changes over time. Sometimes they're in cocooning mode. Sometimes they're out actively engaging. That's the fascinating stuff to learn about each of us as individuals. So the last piece that I wanted to go to now, I know I love this one too. Now that we've we're reconnecting with our kids, right? Um, we're 
doing better at noticing when we're caught in our heads, when we're stuck in our heads and we're getting more actively into the moment. Um, and we're getting in more into the flow of our unschooling days now, right? So we're popping, we're connecting as much as we can. Now, none of this means things go perfectly. And you know, we've talked about that too. So much of um, so much of attachment and connection is about reconnecting after something goes a little sideways. That's why I always talk about it as playing with things because we try things and, and then we see what happens, right? Maybe it, it, it doesn't help. Maybe it sparks a more negative reaction. Those are all pieces that we're learning about and we can still connect. Don't use those to, as an excuse to just stay pulled back. Right. But so now that we're more into the flow of our days, it's a great time for us to consider stretching our wings and stepping a bit more out of our comfort zone, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, this was really one of the biggest areas of growth for me. So I uh, mentioned this many times before, I'm sure, but I'm an introvert. And so it doesn't really come naturally for me to go up to strangers or like seek people out and ask them questions or opportunities. I mean, over my lifetime, I found ways for me to bring things into my own life, but it was a stretch for me to kind of figure out, okay, how do I do that for my kids? And what does that look like? Um, but it was so important. And what I found over the years is that people really enjoy talking about their passions and they love it when kids are interested. So when they meet a child that's interested, they get so excited. So I remember this time when um, Raylan was really very young. I wonder if she even remembers. I may ask her later. Um, really into rocks and minerals. And so here she's this little, little kid, but she knew all kinds of things about rocks and minerals and love collecting them. So so there was a local club and it was downtown and we were 30 minutes from downtown. And of course, I didn't know anybody. And that's not my, you know, my best spot is to like, you know, go into something like that. But I, I just like, we got to do it. We got to go see what it's about, you know, and oh my gosh, they loved her being there. They showered her with all these cool specimens. We, you know, came home with all these things. They just took us both under their wings and, you know, that was hard for me, but it made all these connections. And so, I, you know, I loved it. It was just that reminder that, you know, people are, when, especially when you're connecting over passions, you know, if your child has a passion, you can find somebody else with that passion and they'll get so much out of that exchange. Um, and I also found that, so she um, in particular had a lot of social needs. So she really liked to be around friends and people and whatever. And I found that I needed to be in our community, which was again, a large city at the time, um, the creator of the groups, you know, creating gatherings, creating, you know, field trips to places, coordinating kickball at the local park. Because what I found is that some people can feel very overwhelmed by that piece of the scheduling and the figuring out and whatever, but they were excited to attend. So if I could do those pieces, which yeah, it was, it was more work, but it brought these people into our lives. It brought these experiences that my daughter wanted. And, you know, it just, I could make sure that she had those experiences. It's that piece of making the world bigger. And, you know, Erica um, Davis Petrie it, it mentioned it a couple podcasts ago and in kind of a different context, but it's the same. It's that making the world bigger. And so, you know, that really is our role, I feel like, or one of my roles is to help make the world bigger, to follow their rabbit trails, to figure out, you know, how to bring things into their life, but also enjoy. I, I, I want to be clear about this because I think sometimes people can go, okay, I've got to do all the things, you know, I've got to make, the, you know, make all these things happen because you're also going to have these stretches of cocooning times and wanting to be home. And then it's just like what Pam was just talking about. So then it's thinking of like, how can I connect about their interests? How can I just be available to hear about their interests of what's bubbling up for them at home and be thinking of different ways to bring things into our life. But it doesn't, it's not so I do believe it's a role, but it's not this imperative that we have to take on in like this really rabid way. It's just a way to realize, okay, I want to, I want to check in, you know, am I, am, is something in my personality holding us back? Is there something that I need to stretch through? And that was just part of my own growth and it'll be very different for other people. And I could tell from Erica's podcast that she's an extrovert and those things came very easily to her to ask every single person she met how they got their job and what they did. That? How'd you get that job? I thought that was awesome. Yes, isn't that amazing? Like, I loved that she did that. And I thought I would want to know that information. I wouldn't want to ask. 
thought it would be a hard step for me to ask it. So I thought that was so interesting. And again, just a checking in with myself. And so just one last thing, I guess I just, I, I do like to, when I'm talking um, about unschooling, especially with people that aren't as familiar, you know, unschooling is not a, the easy path, okay? It's not the, you know, in some ways, I think the plopping everybody down at the table with a workbook and walking away and saying, get it done is probably easier. But for me, it's what unschooling involves is this kind of creative, out of the box thinking, puzzle solving. And I would much rather spend my energy there on building these relationships, on finding creative solutions, on figuring out how to follow the rabbit holes than I would on um, fights over homework or curriculum requirements or you know forcing someone to do something they don't wanna do. So for me, it's not easy, but it's about the energy where, where I wanna spend it. Cause you're gonna spend energy whether they're in school or whether you're sitting them at the table or whether you're unschooling, but it's kind of where do you want that energy and how do you want to, I just, for, for personal reasons, like I don't want to be in that ugly space all the time. I like being in a happy, creative puzzle solving space, you know, and so, I just wanted to add that, but anyway, making the world bigger, but in a way that works for everybody. So there's, it's not a requirement. Do you know what I'm saying, Pam? Like, I feel like that I'm worried a slight bit about people taking that the wrong way. <laughs> yeah. So I'm not going to let you talk as long because I lose all the points. <laughs> I'm going to be like, stop for a second. <laughs> go. It's good. But, okay. So um, the, how the Erica thing. Um, and the question, you know, how'd you get that job? How'd you get that job? Which I thought was awesome. And I could, so then like, I'm thinking about that through the lens of my comfort zone, like, cause that would definitely push me, but it might be something I could play with. Like, I'm already thinking, you know what, if I think of it as a project, right. Not just me personally approaching, like it's, it's that step of detachment. I was going to, that leads me nicely to the next point, which is that, I found it easier to stretch my comfort zones in support of my children, right? Because that gave me a good reason, yeah. you know, uh, more of a, a reason um, because then the outcome meant something. No matter, no matter how it turned out, I was stretching, stretching for, for a reason that was important to me, right? So that was, that's something to consider. Um, and I love your point about, yeah, it's, it's not about like, for me, that would be like a leap outside your comfort zone so that you're really trying to be somebody that you're not something that you're not. And you're kind of guilting yourself into doing that. And yeah, that's not sustainable. That's not sustainable at all. And it's great for your kids to know who you are, right? And it doesn't, you're not the only one. Like, there's no reason why, okay, you know what? I'm not, I'm really not comfortable doing that. Um, but I have this friend, she'll be able, you know, she can do this or he can do that. But making the world bigger is where we're back to, right? We don't have to be all the things. If something's challenging for us and we're really not comfortable, maybe yet, maybe never, um, but we can connect our kids with other people who can help them with those things and do those things and take them those places or, you know, who are like back to what they're passionate about and connecting them with other people who are passionate about those things. Yeah. You know, I cannot have a, a photography conversation with Lissy at the depth that she can have it right. Nor, nor, you know, with all of my kids, their passions and their knowledge and understanding has far surpassed mine. But I can, I can celebrate what they know when they share things. I can still love what they're producing and creating and that kind of stuff, you know, and I can help them and encourage them um, and try to find things for them, you know, so we can be supportive without having to actually be the thing, right? So, but the comfort zone is just such an interesting thing to play with because, and when we look at it through the lens of the way you often talk about it, Anna, being the person I want to be, right? You know, is that something that I would like to try and do? And it's, it's so valuable to play with that, 
um, comfort zone rather than to just this is self awareness piece again rather than to just stay who I am. I'm a growing and changing human being, and that's cool. Um, just to not put such big expectations on myself to be somebody totally different than I am. Like, so yeah, I understand how it's like, you don't want people to get the impression that they need to be something different, but also to remember that we can grow and change. And it's not about us being the same person all the time. Reflect on it, you know, don't take it as an imperative. Okay. I have to start a group and do a thing and make a thing. No, it's like, look at your life and think, what do I need to stretch? Where, where would that feel good? And where would it enhance my child's life? And, and what's going on with them that I can do? So it's not a prescription, but it's just an idea to kind of reflect about. Sometimes we can get kind of comfortable in our bubble and yet it may be time and our kids may be asking for more and we're not sure how to do that. And I love the point you said about, you know, it doesn't have to all fall to us because I'll even say with the group starting piece, I have a friend who's much more extroverted. And so some of those pieces came easier, but I was good at the puzzle solving and mapping out like what we should do and timing and this kind of thing. And so I could take care of that and posting events and doing whatever. And she could be kind of the face when we were at the park greeting people and doing, and I could take that a little bit slower because that was a little bit harder for me. But so yeah, finding those partners in this journey and finding the mentors and, you know, that can help your kids have those deep conversations that, you know, maybe it's just, you know, I don't think you or I will ever know as much about photography as Lizzie does, but you know, but I can still love listening to it. But, but I also know that she probably gets a lot out of really talking to somebody that already has that foundation and can that's go to her people. comfort zone. Like her, exactly. that's where she's learning is at the edge yeah. where her questions are, right? I cannot meet her where her questions are. I can absorb and love and celebrate all the knowledge inside. <laughs> and yeah. another piece I wanted to, to mention, because as you were as you were talking about um, the things that we do, it can be even simple things. I remember for um, both Lucy and Michael, one of the biggest, most helpful things I did in the teen years was be the driver. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah. So many, their, their friends, parents, whether they were busy or just, you know, didn't give priority to their kids hanging out with their friends, right? That was something that they need to work out. But I would go and pick them up and bring them back to our house and, and then take them back home later or the next day. I would go into town, house to house, pick everybody up, take them to the parkour gym in the city, hang out the coffee shop for a few hours, bring them all home, drop them off. You know, that was, you know, it's not something that I would you know, sit down and choose and say, hey, I would love to drive you guys places. Tell me where you want to go. <laughs> no, but it was something that I could say yes to. I could say, you know what? I could really enjoy reading for a few hours, sitting quietly in a coffee shop or with my laptop, writing uh, a book. You know, Unschooling Journey was written in some points at the coffee shop by the gym. You know, I could turn that around to, oh my gosh, I'm stuck in the city for four hours to, ooh, what could I do in the city all by myself for four hours? You know, they're just a way to, to ping on our comfort zone. And exactly the same. Us. Yeah, it was exactly the same for me. So we lived in Charlotte, which, you know, is like an hour from one side to the other. And yeah, people would just be like, oh, it's too far to get to that event or whatever. So here I am doing the rounds, picking everybody up, going to the jump place, bringing them back to our house for a pool party, you yeah. know, whatever the thing might be. And yeah, that wouldn't be necessarily how I choose to do live my life if nobody was in the car and me just driving, driving, driving. But just like you, I found an, the little joy and oh my gosh, the conversations in the back seat so funny and the music we would pick and do and like what that would look like and we'd be singing or doing or whatever. Like there was so, um, and that time in my life was now it feels so short, you know? And at the time I felt like, oh my God, the miles I put on the car driving during those few years before Raylan got her license, but then she got her license and it was so weird, you know, not to be a part of that and not to have that. So it is, it's those little tweaks and like thinking, oh, I don't want to be in the car. Oh, I don't love driving or whatever to just thinking, oh, but for these couple years to make their life bigger, to for these other kids to be able to participate 
participate in the things that we're doing. Like I felt that was a gift that I could give them. Like I couldn't change everything about their lives or what was going on with them, but I could get them to the pool party and they could have a great time, you know? So it's just, yeah, it's just those little tweaks and things we can do. It doesn't have to be huge, but, but we can just take that moment instead of just writing it off. Like, no, I don't want to drive. That's too far. They live too far or whatever it is, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I remember sometimes just being in the car and thinking, oh, you know, if, if their parents were here to hear that, they would, they would be saying yes. <laughs> I feel like just because it's just so cool to, to listen to the conversations and, and to, to steep in their joy right? I mean, it was re-energizing. It was inspiring. It was, it was all the things when you bring that fresh lens to it, those fresh eyes, right? When you're not um, thinking negatively about, oh, like, again, like you were saying, it's that self-awareness piece. It's a choice. It's a choice. When you make the choice, embrace the choice. Don't make it, you know, um, begrudgingly and then be like grumpy through the whole thing yeah yeah I'm driving you yeah and you make sure you're back here at this hour whatever whatever no dive in lean into that choice when you make it and see what happens so often you're going to find the joy and like you said even when things go go sideways you know somebody sprains an ankle and now you're driving to the hospital instead or whatever whatever there's still those pockets of joy in there they're still laughing. They're still describing the jump that went awry, you know, all those things. It's yeah. still okay, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, I love it. And so, yeah, just, I mean, feel the energy of all of that as, as, as opposed to this kind of weight at the back to school and just sink into your whys and, and feel all the joy that you have because, I mean, you love your kids and you love being with them and it's just, it's fun. So yeah, I just, I really hope people can kind of take that away and, and find the support that they need to just lift themselves up. Yeah, no, well, I hope everybody's found this episode helpful. Like I love how we started with, you know, the not back to school, um, the questioning, the, the uncertainty that we may be feeling. And we worked our way through that right back into fully and joyfully unschooling. So I think that's yeah, awesome. <laughs> Thanks so much, Anna. Yeah, it's so great. Take care. You too. Bye.